The Plan Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation, enriching the lives of those on the eastern shore of Maryland through the arts. Visit avalonfoundation.org for details on events, performances, and educational programming offered throughout the year. Enjoy the show. Throughout the process, I as an artist have to be willing to lose the painting, so to speak. In order to move forward, I need to make that next mark. And everyone, every mark cannot always be perfect. And so if I take the pressure off of that and allow myself to paint and do what I know I know how to do, then that can come out of it. How long did it take you to learn that? That's one of the longer ones. That's uh, more of a life thing. Today's episode is sponsored by JFM Enterprises, providing distinctive ready-made and custom frames and moldings to the trade since 1974. Visit jfm.net to view their catalog of designs. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Plan Air East in 2020. This is our 5 o'clock happy hour edition of what was at one time Coffee and Conversations. Uh, this year, we're calling it a half decaf with a shot of cane. We're here today with a man who needs an introduction, but after that, I think he's just going to roll on and entertain you guys for the next 20, 25 minutes. <laughs> we are here with Kirk Larson. Kirk, from what part of New York are you from? I am from Hicksville, New York. That's a noun, not an adjective. <laughs> Kirk, how long have you been doing plein air here in, in East? You've been here a while. You've been here several years. And we know you as a kind-hearted, sort of gregarious, nice Guy. person. What do you like? Who are you? Well, I'm glad to be back for my seventh time at Plein Air Easton. It's my seventh year. Uh, took me four years to get in the first time, and then for some reason uh, there was a little hiatus there. Uh, maybe my entries uh, didn't fit that moment, but I am so, so delighted to be back, and I'm so grateful you're doing this the way you're doing it. I would describe myself as a passionate, creative, artistic dynamo. I love writing, I love painting, I love... I was gonna uh, say, you do more than just painting. You're, you're, you touch a lot of things. I'm a film and TV actor. Uh, pr- primarily, number one, I am a painter and a sculptor. I'm also a film and TV actor. I'm also a writer, I'm a gourmet chef. It, if it's creative, I love it. What's your best uh, sh- dish? My best dish is I make a red sauce that takes three days to cook and will will bring you back to life. <laughs> That's good to know. Three days to cook. How long did it take you to discover and accept that you know you were a creative? Because that's not always easy. It's not an always easy path. Maybe it was for you. I don't, I don't know. I pretty much drew on every notepad and phone pad we had in the house. My parents were insightful enough to get me a paint oil paints at the age of seven. A couple years break after that, picked it up in uh, high school, went to college for illustration, and the fine art side was kind of dormant, so to speak. I didn't know that this existed. I always called it painting on location. It's something I wanted to do. It combined, plein air painting, in short, combines two of the greatest things on the planet. Which are? Being outdoors and painting. And sometimes you could be painting one of the most magnificent scenes and you could say, it's kind of like stone soup. Oh, this is perfect. I'm out there as a painting. Uh, Maybe a beer would be nice. You know, so that could add to it. Or some music. But if if I'm by the ocean and waves are crashing, uh, in, in the fall of 2019, I was at another event uh, in uh, Cape Ann and it was a nor'easter and it's blowing 25, 35 knots, and there's no rain, and people are complaining about the weather. And for me, I saw this incredible opportunity. I got my easel down there and set it up so the canvas was aimed directly into the wind, and I painted on the rocks in the storm, and I painted that day. Sure. And that's like the ocean and painting and 
You'll hop out and paint anywhere. I think, you know, you painted out in the parking lot, this beautiful painting <laughs> we've got here. Where are you in the process of this painting uh, here? Because it's a little uh, miniature that you're doing, sort of. It's, it's pretty much it. It's sometimes I bring this little miniature paint kit with me. And if I've got a little downtime on a movie set or uh, waiting for an appointment um, or waiting for an interview, pull out the paints. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything. And if you take that pressure off you yourself when you start, it allows you to just get into the moment. Can you talk about that a little bit more? You say, you say it doesn't have to be anything and that takes pressure off. Can you expand on that a little bit? Throughout the process, I, as an artist, have to be willing to lose the painting, so to speak. I, in order to move forward, I need to make that next mark. And everyone, every mark cannot always be perfect. And so if I take the pressure off of that and allow myself to paint and do what I know I know how to do, then that can come out of it. Is that, how long did it take you to learn that? That's one of the longer ones. That's uh, more of a life thing. It was actually a marriage of acting and art that helped each other. Right, I could see that. When I teach, whether it's a brand new, someone's never painted before, or someone who's an experienced professional looking to um, up their skills, they usually get the same first assignment. Which is? 700 bad drawings and paintings. 700? 700 bad drawings and paintings. I've got about 463. There you go. And I remember your first one, and <laughs> you, are, you are progressive. <laughs> if you take a new artist and you try to paint a Rembrandt tonight, it probably won't happen. Uh -huh. You might not even pick up the brushes. But if you pick up those brushes and are willing to make a mistake, and I use the comparison, you cannot learn a musical instrument, you cannot learn martial arts, you cannot learn to dance unless you're willing to mess up a few steps and hit a few wrong notes. Sure, right. The sooner you embrace that, the closer you get to what we as plein air artists do, which is go out there and we're willing to make a mistake. And then, you know, during one of the grandest sunsets I've seen in years, it's moving and changing, and I'll tell you, this is, this is yeah, very lovely. recent. Right. And having spent a little bit more time indoors than usual, <laughs> right. especially for, to be out there and to be a witness to that kind of grandeur and to have a brush in my hand, it brings me to tears. Yeah, so you're getting a little emotional about it. That's great. It's great it's, to see. And, and I learned early on in this uh in our lockdown um one of the last things i did before uh, isolation was i was painting in vermont of trying to paint snow and uh things changed and i had to cut out early but i showed this snow painting to the people i was staying with and they had just been listening to news and they came out to see this painting and they broke down in tears and they were so blown away I believe the words were, in the middle of all this, such beauty. And it put a comfortable responsibility on me and that I knew that making art was more important than just me feeling good and that it had so much power to lift somebody else up. Why is it important for people to buy art, uh, Kurt, in your, in your mind? There's a spiritual, personal, emotional part of a person that gets nurtured by it. Some people didn't grow up buying art and they don't even know about it. I didn't, I didn't, I'm, my mother purchased a watercolor. Now, I was already an artist, she was an artist. She purchased a watercolor in, in my early teens for 60 bucks. Right. And it was slightly abstract. And I was like, what are you doing? Right. But to this day, I can still read recall the color transitions and it made my mom happy and whoever gets any one of these or any one of those none of them need batteries they don't need to be recharged they don't have an on and off switch and you hang something in your house i i collect art i don't know if people realize but us artists uh -huh. even at times when maybe things are a little close close to the bone and then we care to admit 
we still buy art. And when the sunlight hits it in the morning, it has a certain effect. Sure. Yeah. And when the evening light in my bedroom hits it at night, it has another effect. And not one painting I have ever gotten, whether it be a purchase or a gift for a trade with another artist, has ever let me down. I, I have pieces in my living room right now. A shout out to Michael Fuller in Nova Scotia. He painted this wheelbarrow, I believe in Portugal. And the moment I saw it, I just said, that's fun. Well, it's not necessarily a level of, of acumen and accuracy, although it can be. It can be color relationships. It's just, it strikes you. And I say, honor that. If, if something strikes you, get it. Dinner, dinner will digest. You can go out for a fancy meal, and I know that that's going to change too. But the art doesn't change. Well, I do remember you starting to paint. And you used to be a little harder on yourself. And I said, it's OK. And at this point, years later, you're able to articulate things about art because you allowed your own reaction to come out. You said, hey, I like this. Right. Yeah, it's, been, it's definitely been a growing experience for me. Being around this was something I never thought, kind of like the opera or symphony music, I never thought I'd ever have any relationship with it. And it's been really a thrill and a joy to discover that part about myself. And I you know, say that very humbly. Kurt, but real quickly, you've been here for previous plein airs yeah. and you've seen this plein air. Obviously, it's great for the Avalon that it's worked out this week. And obviously, it's great for the artists to be able to get to some kind of event that ha there haven't been too plentiful this year. What, in your mind, are the differences between this year and how is this year special versus the other years, which can be even extremely special because there's so many things going on. If you, I don't know if you have a point of view about that. or There's a lot more of a response that that evokes than I can cover in, in a 20 minute interview. Uh, plain and simply, I'm so grateful that this happened. Uh, even, even asking us for plein air pieces from home and I, I understand I had the opportunity to bring something that was partially studio but the plein air Easton uh, collectors, audience, supporters and volunteers, they're people that really love art and uh, I felt uh, incumbent upon me to go out and make some art and it turns out that I'm two separate occasions on either end of a week that I, I caught these sunsets that were so magnificent and, and reminded me of some very specific locales here. And to have an event to come to gave me focus and purpose beyond it. I already had focus and purpose, but as an artist, this is part of who I am. Many of us consider ourselves road warriors, so to speak. Yeah, we've heard the term. Uh, 200, I was, in, um, I was at the Grand Canyon Invitational in the fall, and I drove there. And you get a taste for the landscape. It's a long landscape. <laughs> on the way back, one of my turns, I got on the highway and it said, your next turn is in 487 miles. <laughs> right. We, we don't have that here. But it's <clears throat> taking in the light. It's, I guess, constantly painting, even at night. And the space that you've created here is well beyond my wildest dreams. I knew you were doing something temporary and safer. And as an artist who's also going to other events and I'm teaching a workshop, I want to come in with a clean bill of health. And you provided a really awesome environment where I do feel safe. And People are wearing masks and hand sanitizer. It's, it's a little unconventional, but it's an unconventional time. And uh, I applaud the, the Avalon, the staff, the volunteers for really rising to the occasion and once again being um, taking the lead on something at a very sensitive time and providing what is a really, really important nutritional element of our humanity, and that is the art. Even if somebody can't make it down here, there are people watching. Uh, I, I went live on Facebook this morning painting watercolors out on the dock. Right. And 
I apologize for the bad sound. I knew it was windy. But people were tuning in from all across the United States because it nurtures us. Right. It, it really is sustenance. The way you've segmented into days and areas, um, it was it was a wonderful concept to take the pressure off without awards and is that little awards. But on the on the other hand, I, I'm a big uh, sailboat racer. Uh huh. And what I love most about sailboat racing is it's not necessarily beating the other guy. It's that on any given day, given the conditions of nature, I or my crew and I can discover our best potential. And in this case, running, running down to the uh, museum, going down to Oxford, uh, we had another, it was another Oxford sunset, actually post sunset, uh, a time called the gloaming, that I went down and I worked on that and that was my entry for Oxford, but it has sold, so if you like something, get it right away. And I went back to Oxford and that other one over there um, on the Strand, it was transformational. Right. Um, I'm glad to have that little push of some parameters because it makes me choose a subject you know this is important and you know we're in interesting times so to speak and so what if my style changes which which was a benefit of not having a normal structure right and not having to reduce it to just two images for the week i got to indulge the artist in me right you know i mean you might love salads and one day you like a steak or, or you eat seafood all the time and one day you're in the mood for Asian style noodles. Right. That's what it was for me. Uh, this format, this opportunity to paint, uh, there has never been a more willing, loving, nurturing group of people ready to bring art to you. And you put that art on your wall it doesn't need batteries, it doesn't need to be wound up, it doesn't need to be plugged in. All you have to do is look at it and it's going to give back to you again and again and again. The Plein Air Easton podcast is brought to you by the Avalon Foundation and was produced by Nick Richards. The theme music and additional music used in today's episode was generously provided by Blue Dot Sessions. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. You can learn more about Plan Air Easton at planaireaston.com.